Thank you, Ricky, for that introduction. All right. Um, good afternoon. So as, as you just heard, I'm, I'm going to give you a, a, a snapshot of some work that's happening at Dartmouth um, uh, around uh, reputation management with the library very firmly um, as a lead, um, a lead partner. Um, I just realized, though, looking at the other presentations, I, had, I don't have any pictures. I don't have any beautiful European cities. I don't have, uh, don't have bagpipers. I don't even have a picture of Cliff. So it's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I, I apologize for the, for the graphical paucity of the uh, presentation. Let me see if I can advance these slides. There we go. So I thought before I'd start, though, as we're not, um, um, you know, one of the benefits of this sort of meeting is we're not all familiar with each other, is I thought I'd just say a little bit about Dartmouth very quickly. So um, we're an Ivy League institution. We were, we've been around for a while. We're relatively small by American standards. Um, um, we have a good number of faculty and a fair amount of research, so we're a, we're a, a very high research activity institution um, because in addition to the college, we have a, a huge medical complex that, the, that is affiliated and the library system serves that as well. Um, uh, we have a fairly sizable endowment, and so one of the things that we're known for historically is undergraduate teaching. So we're one of those places that's a, a, a collegiate uh, university um, with a, a, a strong, I mean, our sense of self is very much bound up with undergraduate education. Um, so I hope that just gives you a little bit of, uh, of a thumbnail sketch of the, the sort of institution we are. So before I, I talk about the services, I thought it might be helpful to say what we had before the services. Um, We've invested fairly heavily in the last seven or eight years in a, a digital library program. We do digital publishing. We support open access journals and e-books. We work with our university press. So we've done a digitized collection. So nothing, um, nothing that you wouldn't see in many, many other places, but it, it has been a, a major area of activity. Um, again, like many of our peers, we've been a lead voice for open access on campus and Last month, we passed um, a, a faculty open access uh, policy. So we now have uh, essentially prior um, permission to put anything that the faculty publish that is not um, issued a waiver into uh, an open access space of some sort. And this was very much driven by the library with the faculty. Um, we have good relationships, which we, we capitalize on a lot with our faculty with, and with ITS in particular, and that latter one will become um, uh, evident, uh, its importance will become evident in a moment. And then, again, like all of us, we have a, a strong curatorial sense about our scholarship. And this uh, has been something that we've been, um, you know, we've been very much putting to the foreground as we have the open access policies. You know, why go to all this trouble? Partly it's that we want to be able to, to take an active role in safeguarding and curating Dartmouth faculty scholarship. So that's pretty much where the library was. The institution, more broadly, um, certainly has as one of its, its current institutional goals a desire to promote Dartmouth research. I mentioned we're known for our teaching. And we're also known in plenty of, of um, scholarly circles for our research, but our global profile is not high. Um, as we see when we look at some of those, uh, those tables and, and uh, rankings that we were looking at earlier this afternoon. More specifically for the reputation services, we didn't have a, we didn't have a uh, institutional repository. So there are some things that are happening at the department level, but we never had one. Um, um, we also don't have a faculty profile system. There are faculty websites, of course, and <coughs> the, um, the professional schools, engineering, business, medical, um, put a lot of effort into their profiles. It, um, they have public affairs folks, but we don't have a system that you would recognize. And of course, some then are uneven. And we certainly didn't have any central database of the output of the institution. Um, so a lot that, that wasn't in place um, going into this. What we did see, though, was a service opportunity. And um, 
two years ago now, uh, computing ITS and um, and the library got together and, and our joint sense of priority came together around um, a set of services that would serve researchers in a variety of ways. It was important, um, I think, that we presented this as a joint initiative from the beginning. It would have happened, I suppose, just fine if, if either one of us had gone alone. But it was, a, it was a great opportunity to partner. The library didn't really want to own all this infrastructure um, uh, solo. And, um, and it, built, it built on some strengths that we had there. We worked well together. It also made sense to go to the college and say, this is a, an initiative. We'd like to make a, a three-year priority. Um, and we're doing it as a, uh, as a partnership. It also built on various prior relationship, uh, uh, prior investments, excuse me. So, um, yeah, we're certainly making use of the work we've done in the digital program. Uh, we, the year before, hired our first digital preservation librarian, and that curatorial expertise comes to bear here. Um, meanwhile, ITS, amongst other things, has um, put in the, the um, it's the Oracle product, if you, if you uh, care to know, but put in a campus-wide identity management system that's under, that's a piece of, you know, deep in infrastructure underpinning all sorts of new services. Um, there's an upside to having nothing in place. And the upside is that we had no legacy systems to overcome. We had no institutional repository that was underpopulated and, and um, uh, we had no, um, well, we had no legacy systems. Um, one of my less cheerful colleagues has pointed out to me that we're actually building the next generation's legacy system right now as we go about this, but, um, but uh, yeah, um, that's, that's for uh, others to deal with, perhaps. But it did mean, as we moved into thinking about a new campus infrastructure, that we really were starting with the, the proverbial blank slate. We had a clear sense of service mission, but we didn't have, um, in good, bad, and in different ways, anything in place. What's going in, and I'm not going to say very much about the, the uh, infrastructure itself. I'm happy to answer questions, but um, just so you get some frame for this, we're using an open source product for what we're calling the Dartmouth Academic Commons, our um, scholarship online, and our citations of scholarship online. Um, Fedora is now at Fedora 4, and the uh, Hydra community is, is robust, so this was a... a um, this was a relatively easy choice with that partnership with ITS. It would have been a bigger investment, tougher choice if we were simply using library resources. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned that we, we put a lot of effort into a digital library program, which is true. What we didn't really have, though, was a digital library infrastructure underpinning it that you would recognize as a grown-up infrastructure. So one of the great benefits to the library of this is that simultaneously we're co-investing in a scholarly system and using the same um, Fedora Hydra platform for a, the, um, the next version of the digital library. Uh, again, that partnership with computing means that we've got a, a, we, we will have much more bench strength in what's not an uncomplex um, open source landscape as we, as we move forwards. And these obviously can function and look differently, but under the hood, there'll be, there'll be a common campus infrastructure. <clears throat> and then we've also licensed uh, Symplectic Elements, which has come up several times today, uh, in order to, to have a piece of middleware that will, that will gather, um, help us disambiguate, and then uh, allow us to publish out in various settings the, uh, the citations from the college. Um, including, of course, populating the, the Fedora Hydra infrastructure with, uh, with, with uh, citations uh, um, for scholarship. One of the things that we had to, um, that took a little bit of working out was quite what was this co-investment. So we, we knew that we both had a, a joint priority, um, the library and, and computing. Um, we had you know, slightly different things we could offer up, 
Um, and we've ended up, I think, in a position that's, that's relatively equitable. Um, uh, there, there are two staff positions from ITS. We have a, a programmer and a project director who, um, uh, who are a uh, you know, significant contribution from, from their side. Um, the library is moving, as many of us are, to hire a digital scholarship librarian. This is, uh, interviews are coming up. Um, and certainly this made it easier to move in that direction um, than perhaps it would have been without this partnership. We have a very active director of digital resources and scholarly communications who, um, of course, is in a, a lead role. This is not a new position, but it's one certainly that's very plugged in with the, the faculty. Um, and then a little less um, mapped out, there's a significant commitment from a whole range of specialties in the library. And um, these aren't new, they're not new positions, nor are they at this point you know, full time on this project. But they are um, all skill sets that we have, many of these skills we've heard about today, that um, can be brought to bear on uh, this service cluster. Um, and indeed, these, these uh, uh, library experts are very keen to be involved in this, uh, this work. So this is a, a, an opportunity for them to, to move more swiftly, perhaps, than they, they could have done otherwise. And then there's a joint budget for the things you have to license and buy. Um, including potentially data input for CVs and you know, we, we haven't um, fully worked out how the content's getting in there that can't come in through harvesting. But um, you know, it's no secret that the harvesting mechanisms, whether whichever one you use, are, are much more effective in the sciences, in medicine, than they are in the humanities. So um, in order to, to be able to represent our work across campus, we're going to have to uh, find other ways of getting some of that material into the system to begin with. As far as talking about this at home, we've tried not to say the word infrastructure very much. And we failed, but we've also tried not to say Hydra Fedora or institutional repository. Um, because it was very clear early on that, and again, coming very late to a party, you have some benefits of, of uh, braver colleagues who've gone first and who've learned lessons you don't have to learn the hard way. Um, so both looking at what's happened in this space over the last decade, but also talking to our faculty um, and um, having Ithaca Consulting come in, uh, Ithaca SNR come in and do a consultancy for us, it was quite clear that the you know, the terms that we use um, are not uh, readily meaningful even today with our faculty. Um, however, if you talk about things you can do for them uh, with uh, zero or minimal effort on their part, then uh, you get a much, uh, much better audience. The other, um, the other thing that was, that was quite clear as we talked to our faculty was that um, the services that they wanted and that we wanted to offer were considerably broader than those that rely on an institutional repository. So um, uh, no shock, we have some open access skeptics who uh, really don't see the benefits of it. Um, uh, while that's what you're talking about, their eyes glaze over, but when you start talking about citation management and all of the things that can come from that or data management plans, then suddenly there's a service in this service cluster that's relevant to them. So um, the, this is you know, a particularly um, straightforward way of marketing, but, but it, it, we are struggling as much as we can to talk about this service bundle whenever we're, we're facing any sort of, of audience uh, who isn't us. Um, and, uh, and so far, that's, that seems to be uh, gathering some, um, some success. Uh, we're also a very high-touch operation, so this is not a new man mandate. Yeah, our faculty, like uh, some of yours, I'm sure, are very, uh, yeah, their antenna are up, um, very alert for anything that looks like more work that they have to do, and um, there really isn't anything here they have to do. Um, they can benefit to a fairly high degree by, by simply allowing it to happen. Um, there's opportunities for them to engage, of course, and we do have, we have a spectrum like uh, any institution. We have some individuals who are very keen to engage with the, the citation management uh, 
portions of this, um, um, but it's not anything that anybody has to do. This has some staffing implications. If we're going to say we're going to do it for you, then the load on us, and much of this will fall to the library, is greater. The speed at which the work gets done is somewhat slower. Um, and we've got a, a very definite sort of phased approach that, that tries to do some, some interesting and, and exciting things early on, but, but is balanced with the resources we have to put to this. I don't think there's much choice in the setting that I'm in. There is no way to mandate anything. Um, and simply setting up something that you could populate would, uh, would not yield the, the, um, the research global impact, that, uh, the reputation impact that we really want to be able to say we're contributing to. So um, you know, the middle ground is that we have to do a fair amount of that work. Uh, in those disciplines where the symplectic elements of the world work well, then that middleware um, tool certainly takes the sting out of the work, but so uh, there's still plenty to be to be done. The services we've been talking about are um, all clustered around uh, getting your scholarship better known, um, helping you do reporting. The thing that's ha that's had the most positive feedback because it touches everybody is how can we help you do your annual report, your NIH bio sketch, your reporting on scholarship generated during a grant, all these things that are current mandates that are not really run by a system. And I was very intrigued by, uh, by Ginny's uh, um, presentation on, on their new system. Um, so one of the things that hasn't been lost um, in our sort of conceptual presentation of what we're doing is that this, this should make my life easier if I'm a faculty member, um, if no other time uh, than the annual reporting. The, um, and that currently is done by you know, largely mechanical means. So we're looking forward to having feeds not only of scholarship, of course, but, um, but feeds out of the, uh, the courseware system, uh, feeds out of Banner, the registration system, so that you can actually pull into that middleware layer of, of information about a faculty member, um, knowledge of what they've taught as well as what they've published. Uh, knowledge of their home department. Um, uh, and hopefully, we will have a much higher data um, accuracy rate because, as no surprise, we don't always remember the name of the course we taught. Um, it's not Shakespeare 101, it's Introduction to Shakespeare. Um, so, so in, amongst other things, we should see a, a higher quality of data as well as a lower um, burden on the faculty or their assistants. What we've not talked about, except in very theoretical terms, is the assessment side of this. So if you were to go to, uh, I'm sure, the Symplectic Elements website, and I'm sure any, any of the other ones of its ilk, at least half of what you would learn is how you can use this infrastructure to assess all sorts of things about the people who are in it. Um, we, uh, we are... We can't help but be interested in what you can do with alt metrics and everything else. And we're already beginning um, in, our, in our quieter, um, uh, non-public spaces to talk about what, what, uh, how can we drive um, uh, visualizations once we get some of this data in. What we're not doing, though, is anything other than um, demonstrating what could be done. Uh, it would be politically... Um, dangerous for us to be seen to be owning or driving the issue of how to assess the faculty. Um, this really has to be something that the campus, the faculty, the campus administration decide. There's nothing that says you have to use these tools for assessment at all. We have a perfectly nice service bundle uh, of things that we can offer, um, an infrastructure for our new open access policy that, that um, is completely separate to the assessment piece. It's going to be irresistible, uh, I suspect, um, but it's not, um, yeah, it would be counterproductive for the library to be seen to be the entity on campus that is somehow pushing this. We can inform the choices. Uh, we've already heard from a speaker today that there is, there is great faculty unease about some of this productivity counting, and, and it's understandable. Um, uh, especially in some disciplines where they don't yield to, uh, 
to, to that sort of productivity measure very easily, the humanities come to mind. So I would be surprised if this isn't part of what develops, but it's not a, um, it's not a public part of what the library is, is pushing. So we're, we're, we're past the conceptual planning. We're into the build stage, um, first year of three years. Uh, we're installing software. We're um, learning what it means to be part of an open uh, source community. Uh, not something in the library we've done very much of, so there's, there's potentially other, uh, other benefits um, to us in, in this. Um, as I mentioned, we've passed an open access policy, which now gives us a... Uh, an ability to start pulling content as well as citations into that uh, infrastructure. We're learning what it means to run a citation management piece of middleware. Um, you know, conceptually, it makes sense. It goes out, it grabs stuff, it disambiguates it, and it squirts it out in different directions. Um, there's a bit of an air gap between that rather simple concept and actually making it work. So um, we're spending a fair amount of time. Um, and this is one of the areas where our metadata specialists are, are of great help. Um, thinking about exactly what are those data feeds, how do we build the profiles that the software uses to go out and find Dartmouth researchers. Um, we're very interested in new targets for harvesting that are um, coming along. So there's, there's plenty to keep us busy in the first year, just getting the infrastructure up and running. Uh, on the Fedora Hydra side, it's um, because this is a lively community, uh, and Fedora 4 is, is out now, I mean, so we're already seeing the benefits of having our library programmers and their peers in uh, computing work together on a project. Yeah, we're friendly, we've, we have good relationships, but uh, um, we haven't really done this type of public faculty-focused project together um, before. Early on, we're picking the obvious things. We're looking at journal articles, um, a library collection or two for the library side of how we're using Fedora. Um, and we're, we're focusing on those departments, things like biology, um, some of the medical departments, where the harvesting is relatively straightforward. So, um, and we're being quite open about the limited nature of year one. So you know, if you're in the English department, you're, this isn't going to be of any help to you next year to do your annual report. We would hope by the following year it may be. So we're trying to message, in addition to you know, trying to be clear about what's exciting about this writ large, we're also you know, asking people to accept that this is, very, this is difficult practical work, it's new to us, and we, we have to scope it fairly tightly um, early on. The other thing that we're doing at this point, because it's going to be critical in our sort of um, setting for success, is that we're making recommendations to a faculty committee, a, a superset of our faculty committee on the libraries and some of the committee on computing, so that the policies that come um, even to our faculty for discussion come from the um, faculty themselves. Some of these are simple things. Um, who can put something in? What do we mean when we say scholarly? Can you take something out? Some of them are a bit more nuanced, but they, all, they need to be made. They need to be public. They need to be transparent. Um, and they need, to be they need to be made by the faculty with our help. And then we're also looking at assessment and marketing plans, at least for this first three-year build-out. Um, so good practical work. Um, we fully expect, though, in the, um, the three-year window to have a fully functional repository for whatever we decide is scholarship from Dartmouth in whatever medium um, with some yeah, um, possible caveats about sheer bulk, perhaps, or uh, formats. Um, uh, we expect the shared architecture bet between the repository and the digital library system to continue. It's too good an advantage to give up. Um, and uh, in many of our peer institutions, these have grown up on quite different tracks. Um, we certainly expect to um, be able to extend the citation management services, whether it's simply keeping your website up to date, populating Vivo in the hospital, um, uh, sending uh, data feeds in for reporting of all sorts, and some of the grant reporting is quite onerous in this regard. Uh, we expect that to be something that we can honestly say this is a faculty benefit, a faculty service, without having to say, but only if you're in 
biology. Um, so the first year caveats will fall away. So it's, it's really an attempt to be um, both um, seen to be an asset to the institution's desire to promote um, Dartmouth faculty scholarship, uh, in, in particular uh, internationally, and it's uh, uh, you know, an honest attempt to offer some new research services. To uh, wrap up then, um, so it's service-based, and people don't get tired of hearing, we'd like to be of service to you. Um, it fits us well. Um, we're, we're paying um, a close attention to the output, so how can we add value to the institution and um, to the individuals? We certainly expect this to um, help the Dartmouth brand in an area where we're strong, but our brand isn't um, as, as strong as, as it is. And, and not surprisingly, one of the constituencies, even though we haven't really um, included them as a, as a beneficiary yet, who've already um, picked up on this is our public affairs folks who are forever looking, yeah, looking to try and match some request from the outside world with an expert in sea ice melting or whatever it is uh, in, in today's paper. So this will certainly be of, of help there. And we um, expect it to be part of a broadening service portfolio really across the scholarly life cycle. Um, which includes um, both services and ambitions in data, uh, data curation and data management. So that's, that's where we are. Thank you very much. Um, and I, I suspect that, um, uh, that much of what we're doing is being done in plenty of other places. The, the takeaways, and I should have had a takeaway slide, um, uh, it's partly that the strong emphasis on service so talking about what we can do for you, not how we do it, um, uh, at least in the public-facing discussions, it's the tie-in with a, with a real um, you know, presidential um, priority of the moment. Yeah, it's, it's a deep partnership with, with ITS that won't end up with this just being a, a library thing to run. Um, and hopefully it's, uh, it's uh, uh, an example of what you can do if you've done nothing and then you do everything at once. Thank you.